how high blood sugar shortens your life, know your fasting glucose level, part one of a, a five-part series. You know, there's much awareness that high cholesterol increases risk of heart attack and stroke. But what's often overlooked is that high blood sugar also increases risk of disease. It increases the risk of heart disease. It also increases risk of, you know, diabetes and its complications. It's heart attack and stroke linked to high blood sugar. We'll talk about that. But it also increases the risk of cancer. It increases the risk of kidney disease and kidney failure. And it increases the risk of developing Alzheimer's disease, a, a new type of Alzheimer's that we now call type 3 diabetes. So because high blood sugar is so important, it's, in, it's vital that you know your fasting blood sugar level, or your fasting glucose level, because it really is going to affect your chance of living a long, healthy, functional life. So when I say fasting blood sugar or fasting glucose level, it means what is your blood sugar level or your blood glucose level after you fasted for 12 hours? So let's say you, you didn't have anything to eat after 9 o'clock at night. You get your blood taken 9 o'clock the next morning, that's a 12-hour fast. That's usually how it's done. So what would make your blood sugar rise into a range that would be dangerous? Well, there's three primary ways that it occurs. Eating too many carbohydrate calories relative to how much energy you're expending each day. So if you're not that active, then it's gonna be, you're going to have a higher blood sugar level if you eat too many carbohydrate calories. And that will also raise your triglyceride levels and your cholesterol levels to some degree because some of the extra, excess sugar gets converted to fat in your liver and to transport the fat through your bloodstream you have to make cholesterol to help transport it. So as glucose goes up, usually triglycerides and cholesterol will also rise to some degree as well. On the other hand, if you're training hard, running marathons or half marathons or working out for 90 minutes a day, you actually need more carbohydrate calories to replenish your carbohydrate fuel that you've been burning so effectively. So from one person to the next, the, the amount of activity is going to determine how many carbohydrates they can allow. If you're ingesting more carbohydrate calories than your body needs, your blood sugar is going to be higher. Also, if you're overweight, people who have more body fat have insulin resistance. That means they can't clear the, the sugar, blood sugar out of their bloodstream as well. The cells can't pick it up because it, it's not responding to, to insulin nearly as well. Blood sugar tends to be higher. So in that case, a lot of medical doctors give people drugs to sort of help the body pump out more insulin or increase the sensitivity of the cells to insulin to help clear the, the blood sugar from the bloodstream. It does work, but I'll tell you this, uh, you, those drugs usually won't bring your blood sugar down into the ideal range. And the ideal range is to have a blood sugar level that is at or below 5 millimoles per liter or 90 milligrams per deciliter. If it's above that level, you're headed for trouble. And most drugs won't get it down there on their own. That's why diet and physical activity become vitally important to the long-term management of blood sugar. Now here's a third way that your blood sugar can rise. Even if you're doing everything right, say I exercise, I eat a healthy diet, why is my blood sugar high? If you're under a lot of stress and your body's not adapting to that stress very well, your adrenal glands start to pump out more cortisol. Cortisol blocks the insulin receptor so the blood sugar can't get in. That'll cause a rise in blood sugar. Cortisol also causes the liver to release more glucose into the bloodstream. You have higher blood sugar levels. And so if stress is a big factor, if you're doing everything else right and your blood sugar still remains above 5 millimoles per liter or 90 milligrams per deciliter, it's probably because there's a, there's a stress issue that's in behind the scenes that's affecting you. So what do you do? You need some kind of stress reduction. Exercise can be helpful, yoga, meditation, deep breathing. But there are also supplements that are called adaptogens that can help to decrease the release of cortisol from the adrenal glands when you're under stress. A, a combination supplement containing uh, rhodiola and ashwagandha and schisandra have been shown to be very effective, inhibiting cortisol, helping to bring gl blood glucose down, and also warding off the other negative effects of stress on the body. So what you should do is click on the link below to read my short review article on this subject. And really, your life depends on it. It's a very quick read, but it's, it's vitally important. Now, in parts two to parts five of this sort of high blood sugar series, I discuss other important factors related to blood sugar, cancer, Alzheimer's disease, kidney disease. Well, you'll see it in the other videos. So you should really view all the videos. But right now, just to get an overview, 
click on the link, read my short review article just to get a, a, an overall summary of, of how this really impacts your body's physiology and the basic things you should look out for to get started so you really understand this. Because it's not just cholesterol and triglycerides and so on that are important. Your fasting blood sugar level tells you a great deal about your chances of living a long, healthy, functional life. So click on the, art, the link, read the article right now. Now at machinohealth.com, you'll see my other research review articles, you'll see footage from my live professional seminars, other downloads, resources, and videos I've created. They're all there to help you lead a long, healthy, functional life. My research review papers and teaching materials are complete with all the scientific references, so you'll always know you're getting evidence-based information from me on any health topic that you're looking for. So you should use machinohealth.com as an ongoing, reliable resource of health and wellness information for both you and your family. Thanks so much for watching.